It's time for a review. Um, I've only been introduced to Hobonichi about two months ago. And um, along with that, of course, I ended up exploring fountain pens. I have Katie, Casper, and Bobby to thank for plunging me headfirst or helping me plunge myself headfirst into these interesting realms. So let's start with this one here. This is not the first um, Hobonichi Techo and cover that I've ever purchased, but this was the one that arrived first, I think. And of course, this was issued in April 2019. And so I was kind of stuck with the Techo for 2019 because I didn't plan on buying a 2019 Techo since it's already September, October, right? But uh, if I wanted this cover, I have to take the whole lot. So I did, and boy, am I glad I did because this had been my first experience with the Techo here. This is the standard. Um, monthly i guess so you have every day here um you have the japanese quotes which of course i can't read but what really helped me is this this part here um this is how i plan i don't do any more any less this uh, so a summary of things that i have to note or have to do this month and the month beyond and if i didn't get to do them in this month i put an arrow down that way and it means that it's carried over, carried over. So similarly on the day here, I would put what I have to do that day and you will see a lot of arrows going that way because I procrastinate. And so the to-do item moved, moved, and it can move all the way for months sometimes. Um, at the moment, I plan on a wall planner and a monthly wall planner and I've done so for the past couple of years and so it looks exactly like this but huge and what happened there is that I can list all the items in each of these boxes and even then it's pretty squeezed so as you can see here that's my uh, marriage registration day here and you could see here 10 45 11 11 31 those are steps um, that I had to note uh, from having to arrive at, at the registration office when the ceremony was supposed to start when the ceremony was supposed to finish and when um, and when some people had to be done uh, with lunch which is one o'clock so I was arranging lunch afterwards as it turned out a lot of people who had to rush back to work uh, decided not to join for lunch anyway they're only um, immediate family members only so for example and so that's getting quite squeezed out as you can see there and so um, I moved to here I believe well not quite here but you know something like this and so um, I can't show you everything because there's some personal information in some of these pages so I prefer not to show the public and so you could see here pack Jakarta, Amazon and face mask and face mask I was waiting for because I'm coughing and I don't want to be receiving um, you know dirty looks from passengers off the airplane for 10 hours straight so I, I bought to purchase a face mask so that arrived so I crossed that and then you, there's some Amazon um, refunds that was due to me because um, one particular book came completely destroyed because it was packed um, insufficiently and it's it's that book over there i'll show you later i'll talk about it you could see you could see the cringe i mean that's just that's not even the half of it over there so anyway um so you could see the arrow it just keep moving the arrow just keep moving it keeps moving because tidy up be all right and um i have to pack as well and so i've been telling myself to pack before i got married but um i'm leaving tomorrow and i'm yet to pack today so I have to do that after and so this has been really really I absolutely love it because it started off with how I plan my days anyway which is on the monthly basis and then it allows you to expand on the day itself on a separate page like um, that one there and then that's pretty much it um, so I started uh, for obvious reasons because this arrived in October um, I think I wrote when this actually arrived it was like an inauguration of there it is so first entry that was um, the beginning of October and yeah so so that's that's that one there in I must say this plastic 
um, I've never dealt with so much plastic since I was uh, maybe 15. And the smell of, of these, um, the whiff of it reminds me very much of um, my younger days when my girlfriends, my cousins and I tend to be girls for some reason. We collect stationary, stationary um, envelopes and letter notepads with all the decorations and they're all Japanese made of course and Hello Kitty um, my twinkle little star I think it's called and then there's a rabbit called is it Robbie rabbit or something this whole series of them and these letter notepads these letter pads would have a bunch of them and we would rip one sheet and exchange those sheets for the art for the cartoon for the illustrations and we collect and envelopes, matching envelopes, and those envelopes and sheets of letter um, letter notepads would have would um, they were collected in a folder, not unlike this one in in feel, because it's covered by plastic and underneath it would be this pretty pictures and all that, and they're as the size of an A4, and you would open it, and that's where you you know you store your envelopes and the variety of letter sheets, letter notepad sheets, what do you call those, my god, um, and the whiff of it, and so I'm not quite sure I like it, but I am feeling very nostalgic, and I mean, I've mentioned this before, that somebody said this isn't me, and this was me maybe 40 years ago. The other thing is, um, you see here, there's a mark there. So this kind of material here is less vulnerable to indentation from your pen, so, for example, this is my pen here. Uh, I didn't realize it was a Lamy pen until I bought it, and I didn't realize a Lamy pen was a Lamy pen. So this one here, um, it, it's a little bit more sturdy than these ones, which is the um, fake leather there, the artificial leather. So let's move to this one here. This is the A4. Um, this is an old one from, I can't remember, is it 2018 or 2019? from previous Obonichi uh, launches. Um, I don't think there's all oh, this. Mm, I bought this second hand, so, oh yeah, 2018. So this is from 2018. I think it's called Hana something, Tori something, or flowers and birds or something like that. Um, this is my um, my first experience with uh, Mina Peronen. Uh, Mina Peronen. Um, fabric. It's like this corduroy. It's very, very interesting. It's very textile. I really like it. I tried. Did I try? No, I didn't. I saw somebody try putting a cover on cover, which is that plastic cover over this. But I think a lot of these fabrics by Mina Perhonen are maybe on the thicker side, maybe because of their embroidery, maybe because of the fabrics very much like those uh, commonly found in upholstery. So they tend to be thicker. They're squeezed. Um, those cover on cover are too small, essentially, for these. And so I decided um, to brave the world and just, you know, carry it this way because, I mean, these are not leather. And I'm so used to leather that this is such an experiment for me. I'm not quite sure how. Yeah, we'll see. But I, for the moment, I'm enjoying uh, just touching this. Yeah, so what I did here, as you can see, this is a um, this notebook here. So this is a Muji notebook, and it's very, like, $5. It's less than 5 Singapore dollars, so that's definitely less than 5 US dollars. Beautiful paper, not as thin. Um, but it's, it's still very, very, very smooth, and it's your pen. No matter what pen, it just glides over it. Um, I used to carry around this one here in my bag and of course uh, your pen tend to you know you tend to lose sight of your pen and I put my pen this way which is kind of you know it's all over the place and then I try to put the pen over here um, like where is it like like that and then I if I throw this in my bag that got you know my point is that I was beginning to feel quite frustrated that just the notebook alone and carrying the pen 
alone and I on, always ended up digging through my bag and it was quite frustrating. And so um, this kind of solution is welcome, I guess. But if you could see, there's a bit of stretch mark there. So I think because of the uh, spiral, uh, it, it's taking a bit of room. I'm sorry if you can hear the... Um, hold on a second, let me... Uh, B is trapped, so I have to release it. I'm going to remove my coffee because... Oh. Just... Let me put that there. Okay. So, uh, there is a, di a bit of distance there. So if you close that, you could see there's a big gap where the um, spiral is. So you, you could see a bit of a bit of stretching there. Um, this is my thoughts, uh, thought journals, which is all sorts of thoughts I have. Uh, that in particular is about, yeah, about unconditional love that I've been talking to some of you guys anyway, because you guys have had some interesting stuff to say. Um, so this is a bit more vulnerable. This kind of fake leather here is a bit more vulnerable too. You could see there. The clipping uh, left a mark. Um, this is, I'll review this pen. This is a Twispy Mini Aluminium um, in the 2019 color mint blue. And I'm quite pleased that I didn't plan on this, but look, it goes really well together. Yeah, the color goes really, really well together. Um, the pen is a twist top, so I don't have to worry about the about the lid popping off. But I am a bit concerned that there's so much ink sloshing around near such beautiful fabric. So we'll see. If I do travel, uh, especially on flights, I probably would not have kept. Um, I will never keep my pens together with because they tend to, there's always a danger of them leaking, but I'll, I'll talk about that pen some other time. So this is the cover that you could use, um, as you can see, one of these, I guess, is what I'm saying. I don't have any Muji in the country, but whenever I go to Australia or Singapore, I, I tend to stock up on these notebooks. So this is my thought journal. Um, that is to say that my theories and thoughts and speculations and hypotheses about the world and about people, human, society, culture, whatever, just various, I'm using and I'm just pondering my own theories in a way that I often do. Here on YouTube sometimes in my coffee soliloquy videos, and so that's what that's about. So that's that. Now this is my um, latest um, newcomer here. Um, this is another Mina Perhonen uh, fabric, and. I miscalculated my Japanese yen and I was startled to realize that I paid almost um, 200 New Zealand dollars, around about over uh, 100 US dollars, I think like 115 or 120 or 110. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, it's lovely though, it's really really nice. This is my first cousin, uh, Taicho, and so and I love that this is actual leather, and I love that it's actually, uh, you know, that's not glued on, that's literally st stamped into, and that's the Mina Perhonen logo there. And I love the fabric, for sure. I'm sorry, I'm still coughing, I, I do apologize. Um, first of all, the bottom part here, it's like an overbite, not an overbite, a reverse overbite, you see there? The bottom sticks out look by this much that's quite a big a big um and my current theory is because the zipper dipped like that so that it pulled the top um the top cover the top flap that way um so i'll move it around and for over a hundred dollars and almost 200 my money my expectation is through the roof so that small like that there. I could feel it. It's not by sight that I felt it. When I opened this, I could feel it in my hand that the bottom sticks out. And so I tried to, I thought, you know, it was because it was squeezed or something, but no, it's it's uh, structural. So if you eyeball it, you can't see, but every time I hold it like that, I could feel the bottom sticking out. Now I'm pretty new to Hobonichi, so if any of you know whether this is by design, um, or am I effectively getting a faulty product? I don't know. 
and again this corner here seems a little bit sharper than the roundness of the other three corners um, so uh, I, again I may be just you know imagining things I honestly don't know um, but um, for the kind of money that we paid for these I think although I realize that some of you uh, one of you actually I can't remember who it was said that these fabrics cost about $35 per 10 centimeters so that's about $350 Australian so that's uh, I don't know maybe 300 US dollars per meter um, and certainly close to $400 per meter that's quite expensive and the fact that they're individually embroidered I can understand why that's expensive I've seen fabrics like that um, in interior uh, decorating um, places and so that's you know I can understand a lot of the costs are probably in the fabric is what I'm saying but still um, yeah so with all the Japanese precision uh, that we found on the techo themselves and I suppose um, if you notice, these covers are actually made in China. And I am not saying anything against Chinese made goods other than the fact that um, quality control from the Japanese company Hobonichi might be slightly more challenging perhaps or not as um, direct as um, they could be, I suppose. So here you see the monthly and then you see the weekly I don't know why I don't just film uh, you know five minutes straight of me coughing and be done with it um, and then you have the daily and so I at the moment I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this because in the past when I plan these are too much space per day but when I journal these are not enough space per day. So I think um, that's apparently a common complaint and that's probably why Hobonichi is issuing a free of date, date free um, a Techo cousin. And I'm looking forward to that. And really what I hope for is simply a blank, blank pages in one of these Hobonichi books because I love how the paper is having, you know, play around with these two. And I love how it's bound. I think it's stitched, it's stitch binding all the way so that it lies really nice and flat. So right now I have five journals. I have four journals. I have to add another one, a medical one, plus a planner. So I have six, dream, thoughts, memory, travel, planning, and the six is medical. Um, I have to add a medical one given the progress of my kidneys. Um, so um, I will get back to you with the review of the actual cousin, Techo, Techo cousin next year. This is 2020 after all, so I can't start, unlike this one here, which is 2019 spring, April 2019. I could start with this one straight away, even though I kind of start like right at the end of, of the cycle there. <clears throat> well, April. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, so five months. Yeah, so it's kind of midway midway through the year, which is fine. Um, so, but what I would like to share a bit of initial thoughts about this actual cover, because somebody asked, I think it was Joanne, um, whether, you know, when you write, the zipper is kind of um, in the way. And I want to show you something. That, okay, this is my wallet, which has transform into a whole other stuff there and it's just getting a bit ridiculous and I've always carried a file of facts um, the first time I carried a file of facts was in the late 90s and then it moved to just sort of carrying bits and bobs like this around um, and for other kind of journalings, I use this sort of thing here, and this is handmade paper, but of course this kind of paper is very porous. It's quite thick, but it's very porous, so you can only use a certain kind of ink, otherwise it's, you know. Um, and unfortunately, sadly, sadly for me, this uh, lady who used to make this locally have, have closed down shops, since I'm really quite sad about that, because this is all handmade. Um, <clears throat> and um, I'll show you another one which was supposed to be um, memory keeping sort of journal and it sort of tr slowly 
evolved into thoughts journal where I ended up jotting down quotes and thoughts rather than uh, how the day unfolded and how I'm feeling or what happened and some such. This would also be the sort of journal that I would use to um, do travel journaling so that I would pin tickets, boarding passes, um, serviettes with logos of hotels, matchsticks, covers, that sort of thing in one of these. So for this kind of uh, zipper, uh, this particular one here, as you can see, when I try to zip this, this got stuck. So even if I put it in like that, when I zipped it out like that, it got stuck. And so as a result, I have to make sure that the end of it is tucked away like so, which kind of, you know, um, and initially I even initially I even put this um, in <clears throat> in one of the pockets like this and just to keep it you know away from from the zipper um, I love that the pen places on the inside and everything's contained um, and I love the size as well because I um, like you see here, I have lots of bits and pieces, and with with this in my bag, you, I can't tell you how many times this wallet flapped open and all the cards slides out. And then when I pull my wallet out, I can't find them because it's all over the bag because they slide out. Um, and so with this kind of zipper um, cover, everything's contained within. And this size, the A5, I like it because you could do this. This is an A4 and you can fold um, paperwork or just bits and pieces and just do it like that. With this one here, it's a bit small so you have to fold it again into four and it becomes quite thick. This way you can just, yeah, I have all that. That's, uh, I quite like that. Um, so yeah, so that's just note that one there that's kind of you know the that particular ribbon marker and the zipper doesn't seem to go but also the fact that um, for me anyway when you have a zipper cover like this the idea is that you can throw this into a bag and not worry about things spilling out because even in one such as this one here um, I found myself sliding things in like this one here because I want to keep it I slide it in there like that but if this is in my bag those things can slide out you know like like this one here there's all sorts of things that could potentially slide out and so with this it's good that it won't it's secure but then um, the material is so fragile that I don't think I can throw this around into a bag unless my bag is filled with beautiful silk scarves that won't, you know, that won't ruin the surface here. In fact, it will protect them. Uh, so we'll see how this will fare out, but um, yeah, it's very tactile. I am through and through a leather cover type of person come to journaling and planning and all this. Um, for me, there are hardworking um, notebooks, stationaries. They're not, um, you know, they're not to delicately sit pretty somewhere. So these might be the first, who knows? Um, like this thought journal here has been sitting next to my bed. Um, one final note also is that when you put this, um, like for example, when you, when I did the, did this once, I open it up like so and I put it on my lap, the fabric rub against the fabric of my own clothing and that's not necessarily a very nice experience because they rub against each other and you could feel it uh, sort of, you know, the f this high friction there. So, well, if you do so with um, leather like this, it tends to slide around your item of clothing very nicely. Um, so, yeah, so if you write on a, you know, a piece of nice wood like this, I guess it's fine. And um, of course, the other thought is that if you have stains or dirt got into it, then what do you do? You know, how do you clean it up? Because even in this kind of material here, this parach parachute, um, whatever you call this kind of material, there's a lot of weavings there and sometimes something got in the middle of the weave and you can't get it out. Uh, so you have to use, uh, you have to rub it with water and that sort of thing. And 
plastic like this, from my experience in the past, tend to have the edges here tend to be quite fragile so that if you throw this around, it can potentially split and crack. So um, also in a hot, humid climate, this can potentially be literally very um, sticky. Um, yeah, but, but it's something I will have to, maybe not until the end of next year, I might have to come back with with that because it's still waiting to be utilized throughout 2020 however um for now for those of you who are still looking for um planning for what uh, notebooks and journals and planners and diaries that you will be using you're hunting for next year for 2020 that you're hunting now um you know the last quarter of 2019 then uh, that has been my input for my experience so far with the hobonichi techos uh, original here which is the monthly or the months the hobonichi cover a5 here which usually traditionally housed the techo cousin over here but in this case this is housing uh, one of these lovely muji um, notebooks that cost very competitively, very cost effective, other than the slight thickness of um, the ring binder there that just pushed this a little bit, perhaps a little bit wider than it's made for. <coughs> Excuse me. Be mindful of uh, the more vulnerable uh, fake leather here against uh, just various clippings. In this case, a uh, clipping of this pen. Um, and this one here, with regards to an A5 um, zipper binder, which is practically a ginormous wallet, really. Um, I'm not quite sure what the quality control is like for their manufacturer over in China, I believe. But if you see yourself having a situation like this, which is utterly ridiculous because this is a wallet, but also obviously it's been used in a certain way. Uh, this is actually a passport wallet by Mont Blanc, which is a quite a famous maker of fountain pens. And so, um, yeah, um, I'm not exactly a fan of their leather, but I don't know how I ended up with this particular passport wallet. Um, then this... If this is your situation over here, then, you know, this might be a good solution with a pen over here and all this very generous pocket. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have a pocket here. You could put something here. You could put something here and plus you could put something there as well. This is absolutely brilliant because for me, because of those A4 paper I showed you, I tend to do that. Um, and so things like that, like uh, bills or letters from your bank that you need to follow up on, um, those things would likely, um, would not be likely be in my thought journal, um, but it would be likely here in the utilitarian journal here. And so you can just throw whatever in here, especially, I really especially like that part there, and then you can just close the whole lot and I could spare myself from situations like that. So, yeah, so, um, but the stitching doesn't seem to be quite with the bottom sticking out a little bit, but some of you may not be too bothered about that. As you can see here, that is how much that sticks out. So, okay, I will talk to you again soon. Bye.